Hi everyone, I hope you've had a great week. Today we are going to walk through lessons 121 to 124. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual with the game cards, the AL abacus, a drawing board, the fraction pieces. You will need wide paper, ideally 36 inches by 36 inches. That is something that you will have to come up on your own. It is not in the Right Start Math materials. You'll need the four in one ruler and you will also need scissors and a marker. Uh, again, those materials are not included in the Right Start Math materials. This week, your child is going to learn about division and fractions, which are really the same thing. So let's get started by turning to lesson 121. Now for the warm up of this lesson, you're going to have your child work through section one on warm up practice sheet number six. The answers are listed in the lesson manual. After the warm up, give your child worksheet 84 and have them read through that first word problem several times. The word problem is this. Mickey has 24 ounces of lemonade and is pouring six ounces into each glass. How many glasses of lemonade can Mickey fill? Make sure he read, your child reads through that several times before they start to solve. They're going to use the take and give strategy on the abacus that they used and learned about last week um, for those, so if your child is struggling with that take and give strategy, go ahead and review those lessons. Then your child is going to write up an equation based on what they know from this word problem, which is that each glass has six ounces, but they don't know how many glasses are being filled, but we do know that we have a total amount of 24 ounces to be used. So the problem is going to end up being six times something equals 24. Then when they find the answer, they're going to fill that answer in. So six times four equals 24. At the bottom of the first page of the lesson, you're going to see that you're also going to be using the part whole circles to discuss this problem. Now notice with this part whole circle, there are four different parts. Um, all of them have six in them. So this is how you're going to use the part whole circles for multiplication and division problems. As your child gets into more difficult word problems, this is a very, very important uh, tool um, that your child is going to use. So make sure that they know how to use these part whole circles as they're um, breaking apart different word problems. Now, when I taught my kids, um, I would actually tell them to make a bunch of circles because we don't know how many circles they're going to be, but we would put question marks on the outside or sometimes on the inside of those part circles until we knew how many we, would, we needed because um, I wanted them to know that they can use as many as they need and then they can also erase the ones that they don't need after they figured it out. Now look at the top of the second page of the lesson. Here you're going to um, explain to your child that you're going to write that problem, the six times four equals 24 in a different way. We're going to write it in a division problem that looks like a fraction, which is 24 over top of six, 24 divided by six, equals four. Now, if you would like, you can also include that traditional division form equation, um, but definitely show them that fraction form. That's what you're really wanting to know, uh, wanting your child to know. So let me show you the different uh, equations that will be used for this problem. So here we have that initial six times four equals 24. This is the, the fraction form of the problem that we are definitely going to want to explain to our child. We have 24, that's our whole amount, divided by six, and we find out that the answer is four. So six times four is 24. But this is the more traditional method that you're used to seeing, the 24 divided by six equals four. This is optional. You don't have to teach it in this particular lesson, but if you would be more comfortable uh, including that, that is just fine. But again, make sure that your child understands the fraction form of that problem. You will then have your child read through problem two several times uh, and work through that problem just as you did for problem number one. Have your child use the abacus to solve using the take and give uh, strategy. Have your child write the multiplication equation, um, showing the missing part and then multiplication filling in that missing part. And then they also have them you do the part whole circles for this. Then have them finish up writing the ed division equation 
in fraction form and then also in the traditional form if you want to do that as well. You will also do several different division problems. Um, if you look at the bottom of the first page of the lesson under division practice section. So here you're going to present a division problem for your child that's listed in fraction form. Um, your, have your child complete those and solve those problems using the abacus as needed. Your child will then complete worksheet 84 on their own if they can using the abacus when necessary. The answers are listed in the lesson manual. There is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so make sure you pick a game that will keep up your child's math facts. Uh, you may also want to pick a multiplication math card game since we're working on multiplication and division. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 122. In this lesson, your child is going to start off doing the warm up by completing section two of warm up practice sheet number six. As always, the answers to those problems are listed in the lesson manual. Now take a look at the section called dividing into or dividing one into parts. And in this section, you're going to explain that in lesson 120 two, the child is going to, or actually in lesson 121, sorry, the child divided, divided a larger quantity, a quantity that's greater than one into different groups. But in lesson 122, they are going to divide a quantity of one into different groups. Um, start off by reading the problem to the child that's listed in the middle of the first page of the lesson. I'll, I'll read it to you. Lou and Joe are dividing a granola bar between them. How much does each person get? Now for this problem, we are splitting up the granola into two parts. Well, how many granolas do we have? One, we have one, but we're splitting that one into two parts between two different people. So how many part circles are we going to need? Well, we're going to need two part circles. And again, what is that whole amount? One. Now this might be difficult, a difficult question for your child at first. So make sure you're asking your child, well, what is being divided up? The granola bar and then ask how many granola bars there are, there's one. So what is the whole amount? One. So kind of walking them through, asking them questions, walking them through. And then ask them, what are the parts? Now, if your child struggles with that, again, ask them. So you have a granola and you're going to split it up into how many people? Two, okay? So how many will each person get? If you had a granola bar and you're splitting it up between two, pe two people, how much is each person gonna get? one half. So kind of guiding them through with questions to help your child understand how to break down that word problem. Then have your child fill in that part whole circle set. And then you're going to read the next problem, um, which is at the bottom of the first page of the lesson where they're splitting up that granola part up into three different people. Um, again, have your child build that part whole circle and fill in that part whole circle. The whole amount is still being that one. We have still only have one granola bar. And then in this particular, the second particular, that second word problem, there are three people that is being divided up in. So how much does each child get? They'll each get one third. Now on the top of the next uh, second page of the lesson, you've got another uh, word problem, same granola bar, <laughs> but now we're dividing it up into four pieces. Solve it just as before. Make sure you work through this as many times as you need, adding more and more people until your child understands how to write and use and solve um, problems using the part and whole circles. Then you're going to have your child on the top of the, or towards the top of the second page of the lesson, you're going to have your child build the fraction, uh, fraction stairs. And you can see what the fraction stairs look like over there on the explanation section of that lesson. Then you're going to follow up by asking them different questions about this, the fractions and the stairs. Now take a look at the section called fraction names. Now in this section, you're going to have your child start off by saying ordinal numbers. Now, if you don't remember what ordinal numbers are, um, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, those, those are ordinal numbers. So you're going to use, explain to your child that ordinal numbers is what we use when we name fractions. So one third, fourth, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, etc. The only one that does not use ordinal numbers is one half. Um, you don't say one second because that actually has another meaning, doesn't it? One second. So we're going to use one half. Then have your child read through fractions on the fraction stairs. 
then you're going to have your child use all of the fraction pieces and build the entire fraction chart as shown in the section called the fraction chart. Um, once they build that entire chart, you're going to ask them questions. Um, make sure you ask enough questions so you know for sure that your child understands the basic elements of fractions. Then you're going to give your child worksheet 85 to solve. The answers are listed in the lesson manual, both in the um, explanation sections and also under the section called Worksheet 85. There is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so make sure you pick a game that will keep your uh, child up on their math facts. Also, if this is your first child's experience with, fraction, with fractions, or if they are struggling with fractions, be sure or feel free to work through this lesson as many times as you need to, like the next day, come back to this lesson, particularly the second page of the lesson. You're going to want your child getting comfortable using the fraction pieces, building the fraction stairs, assembling that fraction chart. Make, them, make sure that they're comfortable with that before you continue on into the lessons. Well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 123. Now, 123 is an enrichment lesson. And this is one of those lessons that if your child is way behind, you can skip this lesson. However, for this particular lesson, if this is your child's first experience with fractions, do not skip this. I highly encourage that you do not skip this lesson. Um, make sure that they go through this. This is going to help them get more and more comfortable with fractions. Now for the warm up section, your child is going to complete section three of worksheet or of a warm up practice sheet number six. Uh, as always, the lessons or the solutions are included in the lesson manual. Now also for the warm up, let your child use the fraction chart if needed to solve the fraction portion of, or the fraction questions on this warm up page. For this lesson, you are going to need to prepare a large sheet of paper, preferably 36 by 36, 36 inches by 36 inches. Um, you can do that by taping regular sheets of paper together. Um, when you do that, though, folding the pages are a little trickier, but it will work. Um, you will follow the instructions in the lesson manual to make the fraction rows. Now, if you do not use a, a, that large sheet of paper, um, you can use a, a different size shape, shape of paper. Um, making it square is best. Um, but regardless of your paper that you're using, you're going to need to have 10 rows. So if you are using a 36 by 36 inch um, piece of paper, um, you are, the height of each row is going to be three inches and 3.6 inches. So if you have a four in one ruler, um, use the tenths side and you're going to divide it up between three and then that, no, that notch right after the, the half mark. So you're going to measure from here to, I'm having a hard time seeing this, to there um, for the height. Now you're going to make 10 of those. So that will be the height of each row. Now, if you're using a different size sheet of paper, um, you could take that total length and divide that total length by 10 to find out how tall each row will be. Now, one of the 10 strips of paper is going to be your one piece or your whole piece. So I've made really small pieces of paper here so you can see. So if this was one of your rows, you would just simply put one in that, use a marker, put one in there. Um, that's all you need to do. Then to make the halves, uh, fourths and eighths, you're going to take another row and you, obviously folding it in half is easy, but when you're doing force, you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Once you do that, then you're going to have your child cut on all of these folds. For eighths, you're going to fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then fold it in half again, and that will make your eighths. And again, cut along the folds along the paper. For the thirds, you're going to take um, a strip of paper. You're actually going to take three strips of paper and you're going to fold them into thirds. So when you're folding into thirds, and we'll see if I can do this so you can see. So you're going to kind of just make a bow and you're just going to squish them together as far as you can um, 
until you kind of make a third and then squeeze the corners, if that looks, if that makes any sense to you. So you're going to do that with three sheets of paper or three strips of paper and then have your child for the one cut on the folds and mark each of these as one thirds. For sixes, you're going to take each piece and then fold it in half. And that's going to build your sixes. And so you have sixes here. And you're going to fold one on or um, mark one sixth on each of these strips. Now for the ninths, you're going to again start by folding it in thirds. And then you're going to fold each piece into thirds. So if I've already cut this, I'm going to fold this piece into thirds so that we're able to get ninths. And that's how you will create the ninths just like that. And then on each of these, you're going to cut these apart or your child is going to cut these apart and then write one ninth on each one. Now for the fifths, if you are using um, the 36 by 36 uh, uh, larger piece of paper, for the fifths, you're actually going to have to measure the fifths and the tenths actually. You're going to measure it at 7.2. And again, if you're using the, the uh, four in one ruler, um, that would be that you make sure you're using this side of the ruler and you're going to go out to seven and then oops 7.2 right there um, you're going to do that for all five of those pieces and then cut those in uh, cut those where the folds are and then mark one fifth then for the tenths you're going to do the same thing but you're going to cut that fifths each of those fifth pieces in half and mark those as one fifth now if you are not using the 36 inch length uh, strip of paper, um, you will simply take the width of the row and divide it by five. So if you are using a regular sheet of paper whose row is 11 inches wide, you just take 11 divided by five and you'll get 2.2 inches. And that's how wide your piece is going to be. And again, for the tenths, measure again, um, the seven, 7.2 inches for each of those fifths. Um, and then each of those fifths, then split the, cut those in half or fold them in half, cut, and then label those as one tenths. Now for the one sevenths, again, you're going to have to measure. Um, the one sevenths are gonna be measured at uh, 5.1 inches. If you are using the 36 length of uh, rows, um, again, use the four and one ruler. You'll want the seven and then the, or, I'm sorry, the 5.1. So that first notch right after the five inch. Um, if you're using another piece of paper, measure the width of that row and divide that total by seven. For example, again, if you have an 11 inch sheet of paper, um, you're going to divide 11 by seven and you're going to get 1.57. So you're going to want to get just a hair bigger than one and a half inches. Um, that's how wide each piece is going to be. Cut them and label them at one seventh. Once you have all of those pieces cut, have your child build that fraction chart and then tape them onto a wall or onto a piece of cardboard or someplace where um, they can actually see that. Make sure you take a picture of it, show friends and family to celebrate with your child their accomplishment. Now, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so make sure you play a math card game to keep up your child's math facts. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 124. In the warm-up section, you're going to have your child complete section one of warm-up practice sheet number seven. The answers, as always, is listed in the lesson manual. Then you're going to play the game, Can You Find Version One? Now, in this game, um, this is actually played very similar to the Can You Find the regular Can You Find game. But instead of using place value cards, you're going to use fraction pieces. Now make sure that the fraction pieces are in order. So you're going to have halves thirds, fourths, um, on down, all the way through the tenths. And then you're going to read the specific fractions they're going to want. And that is going to be the tricky part because you're not looking for one half and you're not looking for one third. Instead, you're looking for numbers like three fourths. So your child is actually going to need to pick up three of the one fourth pieces. So three fourths, three of the fourth pieces. Um, once your child picks it up, um, go ahead and um, ask the next one for sevens and so forth. Look at the section called reading non-unit fractions. Now in this section, you're going to write different fractions. Like um, it tells you to write two thirds in this place, in this section. Um, you will then explain to your child how to write that 
you will show them how to write it and then you're going to continue to do the same activity that you did in the can you find game but with the fractions written and not spoken so you're going to write two thirds and your child is going to pick two of the one third pieces you're going to write down three fifths four six and again your child is going to pick up four of the one six pieces now look at the section called at the top of the second page of the lesson called can you find game version two now in this version it's the exact same game but this time the fraction pieces are scattered with no particular order um so my kids actually really enjoyed that one now these games are fun but they really provide the great foundation for your child to understand and get familiar with fractions and particularly in this lesson, non-unit fractions. Now, just so you know, a unit fraction is the one over a number. So one third, one fourth, one eighth. Um, non, or non-unit fractions are where you have a different number besides one up on top. So two thirds, four six, et cetera. Then you're going to have your child complete the top portion of worksheet 86. The rest of the worksheet is going to be completed in uh, lesson 125. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We are here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 125 to 128. Have a great week, everybody.